started all this commotion in Gainesville was actually a girl from the town of Clayton, Mary Hagler. Now, while she was engaged to Joe Davidson, but before they had <clears throat> relations, Mary became pregnant. Well, this upset Joe, of course, because he thought Mary was a nice girl from a nice southern family. Well, uh, while Joe was laying there wondering how he was going to get his football jacket back, he fell into a deep sleep and he saw an angel. Joe Davidson, do not be afraid to marry Mary, for she's been made pregnant by the Holy Spirit. And she's going to give birth to a baby boy who you want to call Jesus. Because he's going to deliver his people from their errors. Well, that's it. Get moving. Now, Joe did just as the angel had instructed him, and he married this girl, and they decided to name that baby Jesus. Well, every aunt, great-grandmother, and cousin in the state of Georgia objected because they had never heard the name Jesus before. Shortly after the wedding, and oh, while Mary was still early in her ninth month, Joe and Mary had to make a trip to Atlanta for an income tax audit. Well, on the way there, about two miles outside of Gainesville, Mary let out a sound like Joe had never heard in his life. <laughs> oh, so he screeched into the Dixie Dilemma Motor Lodge and asked, Where's the hospital? Just then, Mary had another set of contractions. So, just after sunset, Joe and the motel manager went out back to an abandoned trailer, shooed away the dirt robbers, plugged in a small space heater, and delivered the sweet baby Jesus into the world. They wrapped him in a comforter and laid him in an apple crate. First, the reporters came from miles around to interview witnesses at the event. The New York Times came to town and they even interviewed a local cattle farmer. Well, yes, ma'am. I just brought my cows in for the night when I hear this music. La dee da dee da. Now I felt like I was going to pass out when I hear my name being called. Lyman Lovejoy with the Y. So I look up. What I saw looked like about a hundred sons. Now they were sending a message to me, the gist of which was, If you want to see a baby born to God and the joy of birth, you better get your tail on over to Gainesville. That's right. over Georgia. Some straggling scholars came all the way to the state capital of Atlanta to ask Herod about this baby he was born to take his place. Herod, pretending not to be shaken by such a question, sent them on their way, hoping they would obtain more information for him. The scholars had no trouble finding the baby Jesus because a star in the Orient led them directly to the trailer. They bowed down and opened up the gifts they had got for him. A gold American Express card. And some candles that smell like fresh peaches. And a large, very expensive looking bottle of jaded yeast. In the midst of all the festivities, Joe had another visit from the Lord's messenger. Joe! Get your wife and that baby, and you're both high-tailed too. Mexico Cause Harry's gonna try to kill that baby Get moving And when the scholars did return to Harry He called a meeting with his advisors Now have any of you heard of this National Enquirer article About the virgin birth Apparently this uh, virgin baby Is gonna be the future governor if that's the case, I'd like to shake his hand. I'd like to shake it real good. Now, any of you know his whereabouts? No, 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 no. Oh, uh, Gainesville. Gainesville, Georgia. Gainesville? What makes you so sure? Uh, well, it's all prophesied in the Bible, Brother Herod. And you, Gainesville, and the state of Georgia, are by no means least in the delegation. 
From you will come a government who will wisely guide my chosen people. Thank you, Brother Lamar. I feel we should celebrate this miraculous birth here in our home state. So I have a, a lot of plans to make. If you'll all excuse me. Thank you. Maybe. Wait just one moment. Thank you all. Maybe. I can't compete with religious fanaticism. I reckon you and your boys only one or two favors down in Gainesville. You help me nip this baby in the bud. All through the ages, wise men and sages have said there are dirty deeds that simply must be done to keep society going and the benefits flowing. There's a simple necessity of hurting someone to take strength and ability, taking responsibility. It's the core of what leadership's really about. When the red light starts coming, just think of it as plumbing. If you got a problem, you must push it out. But there's no one else with guts enough to be willing to kick their butts enough. I'm the only one quite nuts enough to admit it. They all hit it, but I'm standing right here proud. Paid with their lives in political maneuvers. Herod had made to see to it that a bomb got tossed into the nursery where Jesus was supposed to be kept. Now, fortunately, Joe had taken Jesus to Mexico, so the bomb didn't get him. But it did kill 14 unsuspecting infants and toddlers. It was a horrible sight. The doctors had trouble convincing one mother that her child was dead. Jesus, Jesus, oh, what a 
has that boy got me into now? Jesus! Jesus, where are you, son? Oh, my. Oh, hey, Dr. Troy, that was a fine lead to preaching. You have us in the palm of your hand. Now, I hate to rush off, but we've lost our oldest boy. Oh, well, there was a young man here telling us about the Bible a couple moments ago. Could that be your boy? Ah, yes, he knows the Bible backwards and forwards. <laughs> Jesus! What kind of Bible stories you've been telling Dr. Troy? He tells me you're quite a little preacher. You must have quite the Sunday school. Oh, yes, Jesus just loves it at Valdosta First Church. Uh, Jesus, isn't our new minister a real man of God? No. <laughs> I'm sure Jesus didn't mean that, right? I'll see you next year. What do you think you're doing embarrassing your daddy like that? What do you got to say for yourself, son? I got to be about my father's business, Joe. <laughs> Mary and Joe didn't exactly catch on like that. Mary did remember everything Jesus said and did and wrote it down faithfully in her baby book. Jesus grew up to be a fine young man. He was intelligent and God liked him. The neighbors, however, had a Anytime I please, can I? Can I? <sighs> 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 
Oh, well, shoot, I'll just go tell Mrs. Tatum. The Holy Spirit is in the like a double lightning, 
and a voice spoke from the clouds. And it said, This is my dear son. I'm proud of him. Oh, shucks. Jesus was led by the Spirit into the country to be given a test. This test started with a 40 day fast. 40 days, no food. So you can well imagine that Jesus was extremely hungry. Please, teacher. I'd like to make a suggestion. If thou really be the Son of God, why don't you make these here stones into grits? Man shall not live by grits alone, but on every word that drips from the lips of God. And once again, Jesus was taken to Atlanta, to the steeple of First Church. Hey, Jesus! I got $500 bag going and says you really are the son of God. Well, if that's true, then God's got angels watching over you, ain't gonna let you stump your little toe. So why don't we prove it? Why don't you jump on down off this roof right here while everybody's looking? Go ahead. Oh, that's easy. Geronimo! Hey, it also says you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Then, Jesus was taken to an impressive-looking office by a man in a three-piece suit, and he spread out an atlas of the world. Jesus, I don't know if you know the power we possess over media here, but if we were to uh, take up your cause, you could have the entire free world just sitting at your feet. I know you. It's only your face that changes. No, I can't bring myself to allow anybody to run my cause except for my father. Scram, Satan. No problem. I passed. And at that, the devil left. And the angels appeared with a sack of chili cheese dogs for him. <laughs> One day, Jesus was walking by the river of Okachee. Come upon a boat with two brothers in it, Simon and 